You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, episode number 31. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another edition of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Now, for today's episode, I will be diving into the strategy of launching your programs, your products, your services online. Now, here's the great thing. I am diving into this extremely important conversation with the pioneer of all online marketing launches, Jeff Walker. Now I'm telling you, you are in for a treat. Jeff is known for a system he created called the product launch formula and is truly one of the top internet marketing experts and leaders. But one thing that is also true is that he's not just about making money online. And I know many of us are sensitive about that. We don't want to learn from somebody that's all about show me the money, right? There's more to it than just that. Jeff is truly an entrepreneur who cares about his customers and his customer success. You're going to hear that inside the interview because he talks a lot about the people he's been able to serve. So you can hear his passion about helping other people. Now, Jeff has a great story of how he got started. I'm going to let him tell you that in his own words because it will be more powerful and it's just so good. But what I will tell you is that before Jeff started his first online business, he had never run a business before. He had worked in the corporate sector like most of us, and he had absolutely zero sales training and no marketing skills. He jokes that he was always the kid who couldn't sell more than one bag of donuts for the Boy Scouts fundraiser every year. And that one bag was usually purchased by his parents. So as you can see, sales and marketing didn't necessarily run in his blood from day one. So truly, he was an average guy who made an extraordinary impact on many people's lives and continues to do so through his teaching. And that's truly why I'm honored to have Jeff on the show today. Now, before I bring him on, I want to share one more thing with you. And that is that Jeff just wrote a book called Launch, an Internet Millionaire's Secret Formula to Sell Almost Anything Online, Build a Business You Love, and Live the Life of Your Dreams. Now, that's a pretty big title there, but I'm telling you, I read the book and he really means it. He gives away some of his best, I think all of his best launching secrets that he has. Now, this book is the go-to handbook for anyone wanting to make money and true impact online. Like I said, I have the book and I've devoured it over just the last few days. Now, why I'm telling you this is that you have a very short time. I'm talking, I think a week, a little bit more to get the book for free. You just pay shipping and handling, but it's a completely free book, plus a bunch of these really cool bonuses that he sends you once you get the free book. So if you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash launch, you will actually get the book for free. So go there now, grab the book, and then make sure you really pay attention to this interview I did with Jeff, because you'll understand why this whole launching online could dramatically change your business and your life. So again, just go to amyporterfield.com forward slash launch and you can get your hands on the free book. Okay, so the time has come for us to dive into this awesome conversation I had with Jeff. So let's go ahead and do it. So Jeff, thanks so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, I am excited and I'm honored to be on the call. This is great. Well, you know, I've never talked to you about this and we've met briefly, but never gotten to spend a lot of time together. But having you on the show is such a cool thing to me because me personally, I guess, because I've told the story so many times of the day that I got to sit in on a meeting at the Tony Robbins headquarters in San Diego, where you and Frank Kern and Evan Pagan and a bunch of other online marketing rock stars went around the table and you shared with Tony the experiences you've had with building your online business. And that was the day that you completely shocked Tony about the successes that you were having online. Do you remember that day? Oh, like it was yesterday. <laughs> I, I mean, for me to be able to go in with Tony and, and you know, sort of 
help him out along with those other folks, talk about his business and then tell him about our business and, or my business. And what, it was unbelievable. It was, it was an honor for me to sit at the table there with Tony and everyone else. Yeah. And it was really cool because he was brand new in this whole launching world and he didn't realize that the big successes, I shouldn't talk for him, but it seemed like he didn't realize that you guys were having huge successes with tiny staffs and you didn't put a lot of money into it to get a lot of money out. So it's just kind of like this new world you had introduced him to. So, and I know you went on to be friends with Tony even beyond that. So it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, no, it was, you know, Tony's an amazing person and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I say I had studied his stuff and it made an unbelievable impact on me. So I don't know. I normally don't fly across the country to go sit in someone's, you know, <laughs> I, th- it's just not what I do. You know, I, I don't take on private clients like that. And, and, but it, when I got the call from, you know, Tony and yeah, or yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm there. And, and then, yeah, because like we walked in and, and we being, you know, myself and Mike Fulsame and, and Frank and Mike Koenigs, everyone that was there. And he was, I, I'm pre- you could just see that he was completely blown away. But yeah. in fact, there's a, yeah, there's a funny story about that whole, that whole thing because he, that, that meeting went hours beyond what he thought it was going to go because he was just so completely sh- Check because we all of us in that room we basically started with nothing and it built up these businesses with you know almost no staff and uh, yeah it was he, he was completely shocked totally shocked and you know here I am completely in the shadows just kind of listening in having no idea who you guys were and that was the day and I tell the story a lot that my life changed because I thought what are these guys talking about <laughs> and you all were really happy which I loved you know you were really enjoying what you were doing. And all kicked back. I mean, I love it that everyone was super casual and just having a good time. And so that was the moment where the wheels started turning in my head. Like, wait a second, I can get out of the corporate world and I could do something else. Fast forward to today and my life is dramatically different. So you probably had no idea, but you played a huge part in that. So thank you. Amy, I had no idea. I just absolutely, no, I didn't know that. And it was, it was, can I tell that funny story about, remember, um, and I don't want to get too off track. I know we got a lot of ground to cover. No problem. But th- this is hilarious because like Tony, I think he had scheduled like, you know, an hour or 90 minutes oh, yeah. uh, to, to be with us. And then like about, at about the three hour mark, he had this <laughs> call scheduled with Ben Silverman, who at the time oh, yeah. was the head of NBC Studios or NBC TV. I'm not sure what. He was a big wig. Yeah. Serious, serious big wig. And, and he had this call scheduled with Tony about possibly doing a TV show. And like that call was, I don't know, that's called, let's just pretend it was scheduled for one. I, I don't know the exact time, but at 1 p.m. or something it was scheduled. And his staff, some of his people started coming in and giving him notes, telling him, you know, you got that call in 30 minutes. And I was sitting right next to Tony so I could see these notes. You got the call in 30 minutes, got the call in 15 minutes. Then he started, came in, okay, we got you calls in five minutes. And, but he was so engaged with us, he wouldn't. Couldn't he wouldn't, leave. He couldn't leave. And then finally someone comes in and they're like, they're like, okay, Ben's on the, on the line and Tony's like, tell him I'll be there in just a minute. And we kept on going for like another 10 minutes. Oh, God. And, it's like, and then he's like, okay, pictures, pictures. And he wanted to, I, he's like, got, got, yeah, got pictures. And then he finally went and got on the call with Ben. And then, I'll, and then I think we stayed with like, we were, we were still in, in the room with you and like with Pam. Pam, yeah. And we were following up with some stuff. And then so, someone else comes in and they said, well, Tony's on the call with Ben, but he had more some more questions, so he he wrote them down and he sent these. <laughs> no way, I didn't know that part. Oh, it was hilarious, and I'm like, oh my, uh, it's like you know, <laughs> you were just a bunch of online marketers, and we're, you know, he's got Ben Silverman. Isn't from it him. crazy? It was hilarious. It just kind of proves to put it all into perspective how powerful the stuff you were telling him, how powerful all of that is. Yeah. You know, he saw it. The guy knows when he sees a good thing. And so that is so funny. I didn't know there 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 was that huge, like, you got to get in there. Oh my gosh. When I worked with him, that's all our life was. Tony, you've got to leave this meeting or you've got to do this or you got to do that. So when he stays, you know, he's serious. So yeah. Yeah. that's really cool. I love that. Well, it it's it's just such a small world. And I'm, I just love that you were there and you were part of that. And then of course you went on to be a part of his product that he created from that. And there's just a lot, a lot of good story there. But here's the thing. When I heard everybody's story, one of the things that really stuck out was, you know, where you started, like how this all began. So we've got to start there because there's so many of my listeners that are going to relate to your story. So will you tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's funny because 
I, I've had some pretty big success, but like when I started out, I was Mr. Mom. I was at home taking care of a couple little babies. My, my wife was out supporting the family. She had a full-time job. I think her salary at the time was like about $32,000. So family of four, we didn't have a lot of money to go around at all. You know, we had, we had debt um, that we were still, you know, like student loans and stuff. And, and um, yeah, and, and when I say, a lot of times people are like, you know, I, Mr. Mom, stay at home dad, you know, this isn't like I like had a dot com and I was super successful and right. I retired and, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do next. No, I, I basically been in the career world or been in the corporate world and I just would, did not do very well there. I was not a successful person in the corporate world. And it just was a square peg in a round hole kind of thing. And, and so when my first son was born, just after he was born, and my wife was finishing up school and she got a job. I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm leaving this corporate world. I'm going to be home. I was home taking care of my son, Daniel. Um, started that when he was about a year and a half old. And then, you know, a couple of years later, my daughter, Joan, and, and I was home for a long time and I had nothing going on. And, um, you know, I, I had this yearning that I wanted to do something, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to begin. This was in the mid nineties. And so even being a stay at home dad was a weird thing back then. Right. And, um, and, and so I was trying to figure out, and, and I, I was studying the stock market. I was studying the stock market because I thought I could be a, I could be a stock market trader and make a, make a living that way. And it's a weird thing to be, we had no money. I mean, like we had a disposable income, a yearly disposable income of $400, like because we had this really tight budget and we added up everything we spent, you know, for, for groceries and for rent and, and stuff like that. And, and we had 400 bucks a year. So there wasn't a wow. lot, lot to go around. So like the idea of being a stock market trader was just crazy, but I still, I was studying the market and then, but then I remember one day. My, uh, I was, I was in the living room with the, with the kids and I looked out and I saw my wife drive up in front of the house. And this is like in our old ancient Toyota Camry. I see it, <laughs> see the, the car pull up and, and, and Mary gets out and it's the middle of the day. And I'm like, this is sort of weird for her to be home in the middle of the day. And she walks in the house and she, she was just, she was very, she was in tears. She was very, very upset. And she's like, Jeff, I just, I can't do this anymore. I get up in the dark. I go to work, I come home in the dark, I barely see the kids, and, and, and I just, I need you to, to help support the family. I, exactly. I can feel it right now. Oh, I mean, it was like a knife Ugh. in my guts getting turned and twisted. And, and, but I mean, she had, she was completely legitimate for her to say that because I just, I was just, you know, and frankly, I wasn't even all that good of Mr. Mom. And, and, <laughs> uh, I mean, I could play with the kids, but you know, in terms of running the house, that's a big job and I wasn't very good at it and I'm, but I'm like oh my gosh what am I going to do and then I remember it was just made such an impact on me it's just like this cry for help from you know I couldn't support the family and and so I remember the next day just out cutting the grass and, and I'm just because I had no answers I had no answers whatsoever but I'm out there cutting the grass and and I'm walking back and forth behind that lawnmower thinking I, I my life is going to change my life is going to change I don't know how how it's going to change but it is going to change I am going to support, support my family I'm going to support my wife I'm going to somehow bring her home and so it's a big, long story, but what I decided to do was I, I looked at all this knowledge I had cr- accumulated about the stock market, and even though I wasn't a stockbroker or I didn't have any, you know, I wasn't an, an investment advisor, I didn't have any initials after my name whatsoever, no status whatsoever, I thought, you know, if I could just start publishing about the stock market, what I know about the stock market, and, and you know, maybe it'll grow into something. And so I put together a, a newsletter about the stock market. I called it the Walker Market Letter. August 30th, 1996, sent, sent out my first newsletter. And it went out to 19 people. And, and uh, when I say 19 people, that's an exaggeration. It actually went out to, because there was 19 email, <laughs> 19 email addresses. Yeah. You, you, you could tell like I, I was, uh, you know, one, one of those was my second yeah. email address and one was my wife's email address. Gotcha. I but knew I that felt, was coming. Yeah, I felt better about 19 than 17. Oh, yeah. Felt, I felt more important. And uh, so I sent that out and, and that started to grow by word of mouth. And, you know, for my second one, you know, a couple of weeks later, I think I had like, you know, 21 or 23 people on it or something like that. And then, you know, eventually I put up a website about it, which was really difficult back then. I mean, it was like rocket science, put up a website yeah, and started to get a little bit of word of mouth and started to put, 
you know, a few people a day would start to subscribe to it and it was growing and there's a couple hundred people on it. And then a couple months later, there was 400 people and then 600 people and it started to grow. And, and at some point I'm like, wow, maybe I could try to sell something to these people. You know, they're all getting my newsletter. They're, they're writing back that they like it. They think it's good. You know, they, they, none of them ever asked and said, you know, what are your credentials? <laughs> like, good. None of, you know, it is good. It's a real good thing. I don't know what I would have said. But, you know, once you start publishing, people see you as an authority. And so I started, you know, just kept on publishing. I was like, maybe they'll buy something from me. But I didn't know anything at all about selling. I'd never sold a thing in my life. I'm not a natural salesperson whatsoever. And so I, I did this, since I didn't know how to sell, I stumbled onto something that really it made all the difference because I was scared to ask for the order because I was scared. I didn't think anyone would ever pay me for something that I created. I, and I was literally just scared. I started to romance them. I started to give them more and more. And I started to hint about that something was coming. I've got this thing coming. And, and what it was going to be was it was going to be a, a, an expanded paid version of the newsletter. But I just started to romance them. I did that for about a month. And, and I didn't know what I was doing, but on January 1st, 1997, which is a horrible day to do a launch, the world's worst day is New Year's Day, but I didn't know any better. And I sent out basically my open cart. We now call it the open cart email. And I basically said, I've got this thing and it's available. You know, just send me a check because I didn't know how to take credit cards. There wasn't, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, there wasn't any PayPal back then. Right. And, uh, and then, and I sent that out and then I like went to bed. I didn't know what to expect. The next morning I wake up and I check my email and there's a, an email from a guy in Switzerland. And he was, he said, I'm on board. I'm, I'm going to send you a check. And I like, are you there? Oh no, I totally lost you. You said he, this guy sent you a check and then what? Oh, so then, well, yeah. So he sent me a check and, and boom, it, I was in business. It was like, I think that over the next few days I got it, I got checks in for, it was $1,650. Wow. Exactly. And it's like 16, I mean, I was just shocked. I could not believe that people would actually pay me. And so 1650 bucks. And that, at that point, that was, you know, like I said, disposable income, $400 a year. That was, it was huge. huge. It was huge for me. But was, what was even bigger was this realization that like, boy, I did that once. I, I can do that again. And I can do it again and again. And who knows? I might even get better at it. And that's what happened is, is the, my reach continued to expand. My list continued to build. My newsletter had more and more subscribers. I evolved my offer. I came out with new offers. My next launch actually did 6,000. Then I did a launch of 8,000. And then a couple of years ago, years later, like in, in, uh, in 1998, I did a launch that did $34,000. And I think that was more than I'd ever made in a single year up to that point. And that was the one where he said, okay, it's time for Mary to come home. And we started working on that. And by mid-99, she was able to retire. We, we sort of say that jokingly because she ended up ended up helping me quite a bit in my business with the back office stuff. But in 99, she came home. In 2000, I did a launch that did $106,000 in seven days. Wow. That was to buy, you know, that's when we moved out to the mountains. We were living in the Denver, Colorado. We moved out to the mountains into Durango, Colorado, which is sort of our dream hometown. And, and that allowed us to buy our home in Durango. And, uh, you know, and, and then, and that, and little did I know that was just the start of it. And to, it just kept on going and going and building. And, and then in 2005, I had a partner in that business and, um, I, we ended up, our partnership broke up. And so in 2005, I started teaching people how to do launches. And since then, my, my students and clients have done over $500 million. Jeez. Uh, that's a half a billion dollars in product launches. And, and yeah, now, of course, my little babies are all grown up. They're actually both working in the business. My, are they my, really? I didn't yep, know that. Yep. My son she does all my video and he also, you know, shoots photo, photos and video. And then my daughter, she's going to school, college, but in the summer, this summer, she's working in customer service for me. Okay. That's so, so cool. Yeah. We got the whole family going. I love that. You yeah. know, two things from, I read the book, obviously. And one of the things I loved about it was when you talked about that $34,000 launch, you said the words, that was the launch that brought Mary home. 
And I love that because there's so many people listening that want to be that breadwinner for their family Mm -hmm. and they're just not sure if they can do it. So your story is so inspiring because obviously I said this in the intro that you didn't hear Jeff, but you didn't know how to do online marketing when you started. Like this is not something you were born with. No. So figuring it out is such, you know, so such an inspiring story. And the thing is, so kind of if we fast forward and you mentioned this a bit, you went on to teach people how to create their own launches. And from there, obviously, you've had huge success yourself, but also the people that you support and you serve. My question to you is, though, that a lot of people, especially in, and when they hear me talk about my launches and what I do, they say, OK, well, you're in a make money online kind of niche, Amy. What about me i do this or i do that can i really launch online right right you so know what do you a, say to that yeah the, what i say is absolutely and um you know that that's based on experience so this is a deal is you know i had developed all of these techniques about you know teaching about the stock market so i was i had a newsletter that was for mutual fund investors and then i created another one that was actually for day traders and that was back before anyone even knew what day traders were so it was a tiny little niche and then when i started the first person that i taught this to a man named john reese who actually did create a product about internet marketing and at that point i'm like okay john i you know i'll i'll show you what i did and i think it's going to work for you but I'll, I'll i mean it works in my stock market business i don't know if it works for teaching people how to make money online and you know he actually used it and did the first million dollar launch so i'm like okay okay so now i know it works in internet marketing and i know it works in the stock market but then i had a friend she had a she had a business where she was teaching people basically how to write love letters what yeah and incredibly she called herself the romance coach and she basically her she had an ebook about writing love letters you know, she had she had great work. She was doing. She's a great person, but her, didn't have great success. And but she had a great list, uh, you know, of of people that really liked her stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, let's try it for this love letters. And boom, she had the best. Like in a couple days, she made more than she'd ever made in any single month. Wow! With a launch, and that's with no new products. Basically, the products she already had. So I'm like, okay, this will. <laughs> so this now work. Yeah, we know it works for love letters, for internet marketing, <laughs> for the stock market. Let's see <laughs> what else will. And you know, since then, it's just my students and clients have done this in every mark. I mean, from crochet to meditation to board games about edible medicinal plants to dog training to tennis to Holstein cow embryos to uh, baseball coaches to you know you name it and it just works when I read that list I thought this is so cool because when you read the book you realize wait a second this is for anybody who is serious about launching online no matter what you're doing you can find a way I really do believe that you the stories you told in the book and really what you've explained how to do it is exactly what people are looking looking for because we all feel that our businesses are so unique, but when you start learning the strategies, you realize how you can fit those businesses into what you've created. Now, and, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the, the way this is magic and I'm not some magician, you know, it's worked over and over because it's based on just sound principles that uh, how the brain works is basically what it's, it's based on. And there's certain things that will draw people's attention and pull them in. And things like the mental triggers, which I talk about this whole chapter on mental triggers in the book. And then um, story, you know, pulling people in with your story, pulling them with an anticipation, and then sequencing your message so that you'll never, you can't ever depend on one message doing the job. You know, it's sort of like the difference between a Super Bowl ad where, you, you know, the people, they, they go out and they spend millions of dollars on those Super Bowl ads and some of them work and some of them don't. And it's a one-shot deal. This is the opposite of that. It's about taking your marketing and turning it into an event that people get involved in, that they get pulled into, and, and, and using multiple messages, often in multiple, multiple media, to really grab them so they, they're anticipating your next email, your next post, your, your, your next update, your next video. They can't wait, and they're, they're on board with you. It's like you've created a community, and, and, and this is all, I mean, it, it, the reason it works is because it, it's just this tested 
process that's been proven over and over because it pulls people in. I'm so glad you talk about the process because here's the thing. I want you to talk about kind of breaking it down a bit because Mm -hmm. here's what I intensely know about my audience. They want to create a business or grow a business, but they're looking to make profits now, meaning they don't have the luxury to wait a year or two to make sure this works in order to start generating revenue, which I know from your beginnings, you can totally relate to. And I know many that are listening, they want to create a business, but they need really low overhead and they need really low startup costs because money's tight. And most of them tell me they're a one man or they're a one woman show. So they don't have a lot of support as well. So in everything I teach, I always say you need a plan, whether I'm talking about Facebook marketing, list building, whatever it is, you need a plan, you need a system. And that's truly what you've created with the product launch formula. So I thought maybe you could break it down because I know there's different sections of that whole system you've created. Right. So let me think the best way to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the basics uh, of doing one of these launches and I'm going to walk through the the three types of launches and and, and depending on where you're at, there's three launches. There's the seed, the internal and the JV launch. Depending on where you're at in your business, one of those is going to fit. But before we talk about that, there, there's, there's sequences. So, so like I, there's the triggers and the story, and I don't have time to get into that right now, but I want to talk about the sequences. So, so typically there's like a pre pre launch and that's where you're just agitating what we say, agitating the market. You're, you're getting people interested. You're letting them know that something's coming, but it's not that a product's coming, that something cool is coming. And really in the pre pre launch, what you're, you're trying to be very interactive. Often you're doing a survey, whether it's actually in a survey via survey monkey, or you're just surveying them by sending an email to them or a, a Facebook update that says, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you want to learn? Or what do I need to cover? Um, that, that would be a real typical one. It'd be like, hey, I'm thinking about creating a, you know, a lot of people have been asking me for, to, to teach them how to play blues lead guitar. And I, you know, I've been really, really busy, but I'm thinking, I, th- I think I'm carved out enough time to actually put together a program that shows how to do this. And what I want to know is if you could sit down with me for lunch or, or maybe even for, a, for a, a, one quick lesson, and what would be the number one thing you would want to learn from me about playing blues lead guitar? And then you sit back and you look at that feedback and the feedback will tell you what people's hot points are, what people, you know, what their aspirations are, what they're excited about, what their pain points are. And then you need to create a product that basically answers those things that, I mean, this is how you create a great product. Because one of the things, product launch formula is not about, you know, sometimes there's those movies that like they have a big opening day and they really try to push a big opening day because they know that like once people watch it, the word of mouth will just kill the movie. Right. You know, this isn't what that's about. This is about creating a great product and, and, and creating a great offer. And so that pre-pre-launch is all about getting, you know, sort of getting that intelligence so you can create a great offer and a great product. But it's also letting people know something's coming before you're in that sales mode. Because once you're in the sales mode, no one believes you. What this is about, you know, this is about building up trust and building up relationship before you ever ask for the sale, before they perceive you as trying to sell to them. So there's that pre-pre-launch. And I know I went through that pretty quickly, but one I'm going to get to the pre-launch. So typically in the pre-launch, there are three pieces of pre-launch content. And one thing I want to state right up front is this is about building value. These are value videos where you're sending out a video and they don't have to be videos, but, um, you know, they could be a blog post, they could be social media, but video, it, you know, generally most of us are better at speaking than we are at sitting down and writing. Once we start writing, we think we have to write something that sounds like it's a college essay, right? you know, so it's, it's just easier to be more authentic and communicate better via video for most of us. So lots of, you can shoot a great video with an iPhone or, you know, with your, with any phone these days. So, so typically three videos, the first video, you're really sharing the opportunity. Uh, And and a lot of times people feel squeamish about that, uh, that word opportunity, or they think I'm not selling an opportunity. But the reality is if you're, if you're selling a product about blues lead guitar, you're, you're selling the opportunity for someone to actually be able to fulfill their artistic uh, vision be able to entertain people, uh, be able to pick up chicks, whatever it is you want to do with, with your guitar playing. But there is an opportunity for their life to transform. I mean, it's, if someone could, you know, all of a sudden, you know, a month from now, be able to pick, you know, play a couple nice blues leads, is their life tra- transformed? Absolutely. 
So in this first video, you really do have to let people know that there is an opportunity, you know, there, there's this opportunity and, and you're sharing really the journey. You know, often it's your journey. I mean, even this call, you know, we started off talking about my journey, right? And, and it's a very compelling thing when you can share your journey. So that first video is all about setting up whatever it is. It, it could be about building a meditation practice. It could be about walk, going out in your backyard and, and picking um, herbs from your garden and using those to make tinctures that will, that will keep your family health, healthy. So it, you know, whatever it is, there's some kind of transformation that, that you're going to be providing, that you're going to be offering. And this first video is all about communicating what that transformation is. The second video, well, I, I, or, or it's really about communicating that opportunity. The second video is where you're actually going to show the transformation. And this, like, if you can show your transformation, if you can show your client's transformation, then it's just absolutely ideal. And there's some real teaching in here. If you, can, if you ever got a case study or something you could use for a case study, fantastic. But really what you're doing is you're showing how their life can transform. You're actually, you're, you're in a teaching mode if, if you're selling a product. You know, most of us are out there, we're going to be teaching something. And so that second video is really about the transformation. The third one the third video is what we call the ownership experience. I got that uh, term from Andy Jenkins. I think he got it from the car companies. <laughs> but in any case, the, the ownership experience, and this is where you're really starting to bring them in, inside your product and, and showing them what it's like to own the product and really see that transformation in their life. So, and, and one of the big things that a lot of people at times, they make a mistake, and in that third video, you have to create a, a soft landing for the next video, the next message, because that's going to be your actual open cart. That's where you actually start selling is in the fourth piece. And that could be a sales letter or a sales video. But the, in that third video, the ownership experience, in the last several minutes, you, base, you have to make a trans, a, a, a basically a pivot towards making the sale. At that point, you want to tell them that something's coming. So it's Typically, you're going to say something along the lines of, hey, it's been fantastic in these three videos, you know, sharing this video series with you. I know, we, we, you know, a lot of people have gotten a lot out of it. People have left comments talking about how they're, you know, they've taken these trainings and they're already making changes in their life. Now, in the next video, I'm going to share you, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you about this, my next program that's going to be coming out. And if you want to go even deeper than we went in these three videos, then be sure to watch that next video. So I'm, I'm going to be sharing this program that I'm so excited about. And so that's the typical sequence for the pre-launch. And that's just leading up to when you open cart. And then open cart period, that's where you're actually taking sales. And one of the keys with the open cart, it's now you're into a different sequence. You know, you have that pre-launch, now you're into open cart. And usually open cart and, and that's just a term we use. I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm using a lot of jargon. These are all like product launch formula sort of jargon. But once you open cart, then you will have some kind of special launch offer. And that offer is going to be available for a limited period of time. And typically, you know, five to seven days is the, about the right amount of time. If you go much beyond seven days, it, it, can, it usually turns into a begathon where you, because you're going, to be, you're going to want to be emailing people and posting to social throughout the open cart period. And after seven days, you sort of run out of stuff to save right. most, most people. And one of the things you need to do is you have to have a hard end to your launch offer because the scarcity it, at the end of the offer is what will, dr you know, you'll double your sales in the last 24 to 48 hours. Oh, yeah. But if, if you don't have that hard scarcity at the end, you won't, you'll, you're leaving half the sales on the table. And so that scarcity, and this is another word that sort of, throws people off because I am like the most abundance minded person you know uh, but people love to procrastinate on making decisions especially if they're decisions to spend money and so you, at the end of your launch you have to say one of three generally one of three things the offer is no longer available I've pulled the offer off the, off the market or the price is going up or some set of bonuses are going away and you have to have that deadline at the end. So at, at the end of that five to seven day open cart period, boom, you know, end the launch, you, you have this huge last day, and then you move on from there. So those are like the like a pre pre launch, the pre launch, and the open cart are three core sequences. Of course, in the book, I, I cover, take a chapter for each one of those. Right. I went through them really, really quick today. 
And did you have any questions on those? Because other, otherwise, I'll just jump right into the three types of launches. No, I think you explained them really good. Okay. So then there's three major types of launches. There, there's some more other types, but three major, major types. The first is the seed launch. The seed launch is where this is a great launch because you can basically start with like no list, no product, and no real presence and build from there. And you get paid before you even create the product. So it's, it's, nice. it's a, yeah, it's a great thing. Now it's not for making, it's not for creating a massive, huge payday. You know, I talked about, you know, I threw out some big numbers earlier, you know, 34,000 or 106,000, you know, the, you're not ju- very rare for, for one of, you know, for any of us to do that, unless you're bringing major assets to the table. And for most of us, we're just starting out. We don't have huge list or anything like that. So the seed launch, basically what you're doing is you're offering a series of, live trainings, often via teleseminar or webinar. Could be via a Hangout. But if you're teaching that, that the blues lead guitar, it would probably be, that might be a great one for Hangouts. And you would do like three or five Hangouts or three or five webinars. And basically you just, if you think about taking whatever you want to teach and can you come up with five main topics? Can you split it into five main topics. Okay, blues lead. Okay, so first class would be the pentatonic, you know. The second one would be bends and slides and and um, I'm not really a guitarist. I'm, I'm impressed though. <laughs> I, I'm, an, I'm an aspiring, actually, I, that's bad mental programming. I am a guitarist. There but you I'm go. A, I, I'm a beginning guitarist. Um, I can talk the talk though. And, I, and I'm, a good, I'm a good guitar buyer. I've got some really nice <laughs> guitars. It's like, I think where my real skill comes out. Exactly. But, um, but in any case, you'd split the topic into the five main areas and you just basically do a call on each. And you're surveying who, you know, your buyers ahead of each call to find out what they need to know about that topic. Then you're just grouping those questions then the, into a logical order. You're getting on and answering the questions. Five calls later, you have the thing, if the product's done. But you do the, 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 basically the launch sequence ahead of it. And really, you're looking to get, you, I mean, 30 people is ideal to put into it. But you can, I, you know, there's a story in the book of Tara Marino, and she did this with, she had, I think, I can't remember if it was five or six people. Take, I think it was six. Take her training, and then you know she was able to convince out of her, her tiny little contact list. She was able to convince I think it was let's say six people to buy it, and she was going to teach women how to lead a more sensuous life. And then she did these calls and recorded the calls. And now you've got a product. The recordings you'd get transcripts done, and what you've done is you've created a great product because. Before each call, you're surveying your people to find out exactly what they want. That's awesome. So, you, so yeah. you're so they're actually paying before they before you start these calls. They're paying to get on these calls with you, mm-hmm. right? Okay, great. So Absolutely. they're paying to get Absolutely. on the calls. You're getting feedback before every single call. At the end of four, six weeks, whatever, you have a product, and now you can sell that product even beyond, of course, this live workshop you just did. Totally. That's awesome. Totally. And you know what, Amy, I, I did this. So when I sw- switched from teaching about the stock market to teaching about product launches, I knew all about product launches. I'd done, you know, probably a couple dozen. I had great success. I'd built up this, this body of knowledge, but I didn't know how to teach it. You know, I wasn't born knowing how to teach product launches. Right. So I did this exact process and I got You know, I think it's funny because I got six people to buy from me. That's all I could get. (laughs) I got six people to buy from me. So then what I did is because I knew I wanted more to get some more interaction on the calls, I comped in a bunch of friends. I just, yeah, like 30 friends. I'm like, hey, you guys know I do this. I know you want to learn how to do this. I don't want to ask you for money. I'll just comp you in. So then I had somewhere between 30 and 40 people on the calls. And then I learned how to teach because before every call, I'd I'd say, okay, this is what we're going to cover on this one. What do you want to know? And then after the call, I would actually, this is another step. After the call, so between call one and two, I would say, okay, what, you know, it would basically be, can you just tell me what I did well and what I should do differently in covering that last topic? Do you have any additional questions about that? Uh, Oh, so valuable. Yep. Did well, do differently. And, and then the next week's topic is X. So it would be like, okay, last week we talked about pre-pre-launch, and I just want to make sure that you didn't have any more questions about that, and can you tell me what I did well and what I should do differently when I, you know, about that. And, and next week's call is going to be about you know, open cart, and what do, you want, what do you need to know, know about open cart? So it's basically two or three questions there. And what you're doing is I was learning how to teach this stuff. 
And then, like you said, after five weeks, you're, you're done. And since I'm a huge fan of over-delivering at all times, and I know you are as well, Amy, mm-hmm. you know, it's really easy. Just promise five and do an extra bonus call that's just nothing but a wide-open Q&A call. Love and it. now you've done six calls. <laughs> and, you know, it's just it's a real simple way just to tie up loose ends and to deliver beyond what you promised. And then you do. You've got a product. Now, me being a perfectionist, I took... I did. I wasn't. I wasn't happy with those calls, so I went and I sort of re-recorded everything and redid everything. But you know, in reality, you don't have to do that. I was just. I, I am a perfectionist with that stuff. Gotcha. But that's how I. I mean, everyone will tell you like my training is just. It, it's well, it's changed the world. Um, and Truly, but it has. Yeah. And and I'm a home. Humble guy. I try to stay humble, but you know, you know. When you do a good job, you get, what do you? What can you say? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> but it's because it's not because I woke up one morning being a genius at this. It's because every step of the way, I'm always looking for feedback, and, and I'm always tapping into the collective genius that my clients represent. Yes. And and, and so I just had continually. You know, you asked. Okay, people. A lot of people listening to this are just starting out. And I mean, I just said my students have done a half a billion dollars. How can they relate to that? Well, you can relate because I started out this business, this product launch formula business with six clients, you know, and I learned how to teach it. And then eight or whatever years before that, I started out with 17 subscribers and I just watched what they reacted to. And the, the, that is so much easier now than it used to be with social and with comments on blogs and so many more people online. It is so much easier to tap into the collective genius of your market, of your clients, of your prospects. And you just have to listen and you have to get out of your own, you know, if you've got an ego in the way, you just have to get out of the way and say they know more better than I do. And if they're not getting the results, then I'm doing something wrong and I, I got to change what I'm giving to them. You know, that reminds me, one thing I really love about your book, and I want to remind people because I know they're getting excited, like, I've got to learn this stuff. If you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash launch, you can get your hands on the book right away and a bunch of bonuses and some cool stuff. But I bring that up now because one of the greatest things about your books is that you are telling story after story of other people. I mean, you've got the food stamp guy. I mean, come on. Like, it's just right. amazing right. the stories you tell of where they started and where they ended. And it wasn't too long ago when I started started with no idea how to put it together a business. So I know those stories like really resonate with me. And I think that that's why your book is doing so well, because you can see yourself in those stories. Yeah. You know, Amy, I think I'm probably the most boring person in the world at a, <laughs> at a, at a cocktail party because inevitably someone asks me about my business and I'll start telling stories about my clients. And <laughs> you just can't shut me up once I see this. Like you just mentioned food. St- I mean, now I want to start talking about John Hilger too, because the stories, they're, they're remarkable. They are, it's unbelievable. I, I just, I am, my, my students, they're, they're my heroes. You know, John Gallagher, he did. He started on food stamps, borrowed the money to get my training, but he had a board game about edible and medicinal plants and herbs. And the reason he was on food stamps, he's a great guy. He's become a friend of mine. He, at that point, he was, he was like basically full-time, vol- full-time at a nonprofit. He was going to school to be an acupuncturist, and he's like raising a family, wife and two kids. And there's not much, you know, to go around. Right. And and um and, and borrowed the money to get my training, borrowed the money to get those board games made up, tried to launch the game. Actually, no, I take this back. He borrowed the money from his dad to get the board games made up. And and that's like twenty thousand dollars because when you get board games made up, you have to get a whole bunch of them made up. Oh my god, so, the picture in the book of all the board games around his oh, house. Priceless. Yeah. He, the, the picture, we can only put one picture in the book for space purposes, but there's another photo of his, like the second bathroom and the boxes, oh, completely the, the, the shower stall there, there's boxes coming out the top of the shower stall Amazing. because, because he had so many games made up before so he, he got your product for the record. Yes. Before he got the product. So, but you know, he had this idea for this board game. It was going to be how, what was going to turn his life around? What was going to bring in the money? And so borrows the $20,000, gets these board games. They, they bring them, you know, pallet after pallet after pallet they're unloading, uh, you know, on his driveway. And, um, and then he did like a little launch party like you're supposed to do. I mean, that's re- how you launch something, right? You have a launch party, yes. you invite your friends to the lo- local coffee shop. And he sold 12 games. 
You sold oh. 12 games at, you know, 30 bucks a pop, $360. And you spent 20,000 to get these games made up. And that's like your one bullet, you know? He, the, like, there's no more bullets in the gun. You know, you <laughs> use up the one bullet, you sell 12 games. And it's like, what do you do? And so then he went, he actually, he, he found my, me through Google, through just, just a Google search on product launch. And, and, um, and then he borrowed some more money from his dad to get my training. And he, he just became a mad scientist and went crazy studying it. And a few weeks later, did another launch, exact same assets. You know, he had a very small email list. And that's how he drove people to the first launch party that sold 12 games. Put together, you know, put together a proper launch, just textbook, PLF style launch. And he sold 670 games. Amazing. Yeah, so exact same assets. He didn't bring anything else to the table. He didn't, you know, didn't spend any money on advertising. He had no money. Um, exact, you know, it's like apples to apples, 12 games versus 670. And so he basically made that, you know, that 20,000 bucks back, was able to pay his dad back. And then he just continued to roll out launch after launch after launch for the board game. And then eventually he created a membership site at learningherbs.com and, and, and created products. And now he is like, he, his business, it's six figures and way. Oh, you, we can lost you again. Hold on. Let me see if you come back. Can you hear me? Amy? You got okay, me? Now, so this is yeah. where I lost you. You said he went on to build a membership site. Yeah. He built a membership site, created you know, several products. He's now become a very significant person in that herbal market, uh, especially like the herbal education market, edible and medicinal plants and herbs. And, you know, he's done, you know, some of his heroes in that market have come to him to help him create products. He's built up a small team. He's, he's hit six figures years ago and gone way beyond. Uh, and, and he's made this incredible impact in the world. It's and, crazy. And, and just it, to think where he started. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just on. They're my favorite stories. I mean, you have tons of tons of stories in there. But one thing that you keep saying that I've got to come back to is that so many of these people did not have a list. Now, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, selfishly, one of the reasons why I just devoured your book is because I'm a huge advocate of the email list. And right. the day I finally, it was about a year and a half into my business that I decided, what the heck am I doing? I'm consulting for a million people and hate every second of it. Why don't I have an email list? The day I decided was the day my business changed. So from there, that's what I teach. When I teach Facebook marketing, it's all about list building. I say that because my favorite line in your book, well, maybe one of the favorites, is that you said, your list is not a strategy, it's the strategy. And I want yep. you to talk about that a little bit because it's so important for people to understand. Yeah. You know, somehow I stumbled onto that right from the very beginning. You are so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I sent out that first email to, you know, 19 email addresses and, <laughs> you know, before that was months before I had a website. And of course, back then there was no social. And, um, and I've always been obsessed with building a list, but, and you know, that list that started with the 19 that went on. I think at one point I had over 80,000 subscribers and, but you know, it, it started with 19. And when I started again in, you know, this product launch formula business where I was teaching entrepreneurs, I started with zero subscribers. Everyone, no one is born with a list. No one is born born. I didn't come out of the womb with a list, you know? <laughs> oh, how I, we wish we did. It would have been great. I really <laughs> wish I, it, you know, yeah, but no one is born with a list. Everyone starts with that first subscriber. And, you know, that's what I love about what you're doing is like, you're, you're teaching, you know, a very sound Facebook strategy, but it's all about driving to the list. Yeah. And, and the reality is, is, you know, all of us have to start somewhere. And then we have to build from there. And there's now it's so much easier to build because we have social to build with. And we didn't have that back then. Yeah, it makes a big difference. But the thing is that you say in the book is that the list is like, I know, I know you're teasing, but not really teasing a list. I mean, a license to print money. Like right. you, you tell that great story of when you wanted to buy your home, the second home, your dream home, and you didn't really have a down payment. So you went to the list. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. to me is such huge security. It is. It yeah. is. You know, the thing is, like in our kind of business, there are very few true assets. And I think we, that, that's one thing you have to focus on is building assets in our businesses. And, you know, I, I, like it used to, a few years ago, people were all about getting search engine rankings. Well, you know, 
And I know, I literally know people that have million dollar businesses and then Google changed their algorithm and overnight their million dollar business went to not even a six figure business. Like it makes my stomach hurt. <laughs> it, it's, just, it's, it's horrible. Or people that build up great ad campaigns um, in various places, you know, and, and, then, and then like they, they lost their ad ad campaign or whatever. Yep. But if you have that list, you can, you, can, you, can, you can turn on the money spigot anytime you want. And I know that sounds like hyperbole, but it's not. It's like, because I've done that over and over. My clients have done it over and over. So you really have to focus on always building a list. And frankly, I think launches are the best way to build a list. Yes. Um, you know, they, they absolutely are. You know, in fact, now that I think about it, I got distracted and talked about the three types of launches. I know, we got to come back to it. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's the seed launch, there's the internal launch, and that's where you do a launch just to your list. And they're, I, I call them elegant. You know, they are just, they're elegant because you're complete control of the process. But typically, like, someone will go into an, and do an internal launch, and just through word of mouth, they'll often grow their list significantly. And if you have a smaller list, like you've got, 300 people on your list or 500 people on your list, 1,000 people, and you do a great launch and put out great pre-launch content and create real value, you will likely double the size of your list. No doubt. You know, and like if you have a big list, if you got 30,000, you're not going to double that. But if you have that smaller list, you will double your, it, it's like Tara, she was the one that did that seed launch I was talking about earlier and sold six of them. But after she did that, her list went from like 50 to like 300. So just by putting out that great value and getting people really excited. And then the third type of launch, and this is, this is like what I call pouring gasoline on a fire. This is where things can really blow up big. And, and I mean, it, it's a lot more complicated and it shouldn't be your first launch, but it, what, it's what we call a JV launch. And that's where other people in your market will mail their list and tell them about your pre-launch content. And the reason they'll do that is because they're affiliates and you'll eventually pay them when you make the sale. And, and so this is, I literally, I did a, a JV launch um, when I started my new product launch formula business. And then I did another, another one. My, I did one, started the business, and basically that business went from zero to a million dollars within like six months because I did the JV launch. My first business had taken me six years to get to a million dollars in sales. Wow. And, then, and then I can't, I, the, 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 to show you how crazy it is, the, um, then I came out with Product Launch Formula 2.0 a couple, a few years later, and I built up these JV relationships and I actually did a million dollars in less than an hour. I thought that was a rumor. I'm so glad you're saying that here. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah, I think it was 53 minutes. And, and, and you know, you can look at those things in your server stats. Yeah. And I actually, there's one second there when it first popped. And when we first went live, one second where I made $12,000 in sales. I mean, come on, where else can you do that? Yeah. And I mean, it's like, again, this is the business that started with six sales. And, and, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's nuts, but that's the, so, the, so getting back to the list building, when you do one of those JV launches, and again, they're complicated, um, and they are, should not be your first launch. I talk about them in the book, but they shouldn't be your first launch. You should do that internal launch first, the, the seed launch before that. Um, but when you do that, you can add thousands of people to your list. Like when I do one and I can, I, I'm not the best case study because I do have this positioning in the market and I've got a lot of experience, but you know, I'll add 20, 30, 40,000 people to my list within a matter of, you know, 10, 12, 14 days. Wow. And so that, again, I know this isn't, that's, you know, I don't want to lose the beginners because if you're listening, you're like, I, I can never do that. You're right. You can't do that right now, but don't say I can never do it because you can eventually do it. You can, I mean, I, I got here. You know, exactly. so many, you know, so many of my clients got, it's not, I, I'm not a magician. I, you know, I, if you ask me, like when I started out, like what's the most unlikely career in the world you could ever have, Jeff, it would be sales and marketing um, because I'm not born wired for that. I'm, I'm born to teach and I'm born to help people. And that's what I do in my marketing. And that just ends up making you this incredible magnet and it makes you unbelievably attractive. Yes. And that's, you know, and, and, 
and and that's where all the good things come from. It's so true. You know, I want to, I know we have to wrap it up and we're going a little bit longer, but this stuff is so good that I just can't help it. So I want you to tell people a little bit about your book and who it's for, because some of these topics are really big topics. And so some of the newbies might be thinking, well, wait, that's way over my head, but it's actually not true in terms of who your book is for, right? Right, right. So there's three main audiences that I wrote the book for. And really, these are, these are three main audiences that are in my world. And actually, I'm gonna, there's, there's, there's a fourth, and I'll mention that one briefly as well. The first one is someone who has an online business. And maybe you have a, you have a product and you have a, um, you, you've got some kind of product, you have some kind of traffic, maybe you've got some kind of list. And for those people, this is literally more money in the bank. Well, maybe not literally, um, but it's figuratively <laughs> money in the bank. Um, you know, it's just you drop this in and you're going to make a lot more sales and you're going to build your business. And, and it, I've seen it work, work over and over. Second category is people that are just starting out. They're just thinking about doing something because this is how you start fast. The reality is that, you know, starting something is not easy and it requires energy and, it requ- and, and the energy dissipates quickly if you don't see results quickly. So, you know, if you don't start to get results quick, then, you know, you're never going to go anywhere. You know, our, our businesses are built on, thrive on, and are fueled by momentum. And this is, this book, my process is how you get momentum quickly. So it's for people that are just thinking about either starting a business or creating a product. That's the second category. Third category is like what I call practitioners. And this might be someone who has an offline business and they might be, they might be teaching people meditation or how to eat right or how to do yoga or you know, how to play tennis where they've got a, a nice business, they've got some clientele, but they're trading dollars for hours. And they're like, how do I leverage my life? How do I get some leverage? So, you know, the only, you know, if you're a practitioner teaching people how to meditate, the only way you make more money is by teach more people and you only have so many hours. This is how you get leverage. This is how you take your body of work and turn it into a real business. There's a big audience out there that is, is yep. in that place right now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then the, then the fourth one is, and this is not overtly for them, but it works for them as artists. Like if you're a writer or a sculptor or a painter or a photographer, then you can take these principles and use it to get your work, your art out into the world in a bigger way. Nice. So there's so, something yeah, that, for everyone there. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel no, like a lot it. of people, a lot of people, I don't know. I mean, like if you're out there selling a commodity, you know, if, you've, if you're selling sand or if you're selling an emergency service, like, you know, you're the roto router person or something like that, probably not a good fit. Gotcha. Uh, if it's just a pure commodity, um, but otherwise, or an emergency service, um, but yeah, otherwise this works. It just, yes. it just works. And your stories in the book prove it. So I really want to encourage everybody to go to amyporterfield.com forward slash launch, grab the book because you also have some really cool bonuses that you're promising people. Absolutely. And, and we're actually adding more bonuses. But as, nice. we're recording, as we're recording this, I've got the case study with Tara Marino. She was a person who um, did that seed launch. And she started with that seed launch that sold, yeah, I think it was six, um, into how, to be, how to live a sensuous life. And now that sounds like a soft topic. It sounds like a topic maybe there's not a huge market for. Um, it sounds almost like a, a hard to sell, at least to me it does. Yeah. Hard to wrap your hands or your arms around. She built. She went from that those six people buying her product and built that into a half a million dollars. Oh my in, gosh! Yeah, in a very short period of time. So you get a, the full case study of that. It's a PDF. I'll send you that like the day after you sign up. And then I've got three full length training videos. That the first one really walks through the sideways sales letter. We didn't have time to talk about that today, but that's the core principle, the core strategy, the core tactic really that drives the whole the whole product launch formula is the sideways sales letter. And that's how you get people, I mean that's how you sell very effectively without you know without being hypey, without being slimy, and with you know in a way that makes people just love you. I mean that strategy you. offers major value to the people that are are taking in that content. I'm yep. so glad you, I didn't know that you had a free video on that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I think it's about 27 or 24 minutes long where I just, I Perfect. walk through it and exactly how it works, 
what you do where, what mental triggers you put in where. Then the next video walks you all through the seed launch. We go deeper into the seed launch. And then the seed launch as it relates to the internal launch, the JV launch, and how that de- Develops into what I call the circle of awesome, <laughs> and, and uh, the circle of awesome is how you move through those launches and have them build and continue to spiral bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, and then the third video, it's a video and it's a it's a lengthy PDF report that walks through the entire product launch blueprint. I think it's uh, I think that blueprint is I don't know somewhere in the 13, 14, 15 pages long, and it's a it's like a forty minute video I think that walks you. It might even be longer than that. That walks you through every step of the blueprint and how all the pieces tie together, including resources and tools and and, and everything. Okay, that those are awesome bon- bonuses because you are a perfect example of give your best stuff away for free. I mean, this is this is your platform or your your foundation of your business. This good stuff that you're giving away. So I'm I'm really excited about that yeah no it's exciting and the book is i'll tell you here's the because a lot of people are want to know about the writing process and, and and i am a bit of i am a writer and that's where i do have a bit of an ego is, is I, I write well and, <laughs> and i just it's a fact i do it's I good that you really said that because well. i thought who wrote this book i no, didn't think you wrote it yeah no i it's I, really good I, it took me three years to write this wow thing. And, yeah and and i started talking to my publisher i think it was five or six years ago. And so anyways, it's been a long work in progress. But the thing is, is because it's so personal, because there's so much of my story in there, and I, I want to people to understand, it's not just stories, it's hardcore, hardcore how to do this. Oh, yeah. Tactics, strategies. But there's a lot of story in there because that's what draws people in. And that's what gets people to finish the book yep. is the stories. So, but because it was so personal, and there's a lot of my stories of those, my struggles and my mistakes and my successes and my challenges. But and there's also all these stories of these clients of mine that I feel so close to. So I wrote this book and I didn't show it to anyone. And like, except for my editor, I had an editor I was working with, but I didn't run it by. And really, it's probably a good idea to run your book by people just to <laughs> make sure you're not off target. But then I, I wrote it and I was, and then right at the end, I'm like, it was time to send it out and get some like blurbs and testimonials and reviews. And I got really nervous because I'm like, wow, what if this actually sucks? You know, I mean, that, that was a thought, literally. What, I mean, what if it sucks? Because I think it's good. I, I've worked so hard on it. I went through six, like, I mean, three revisions before my editor ever saw it, then three more. It's so much work, uh, three years. And I'm like, what if, what if I really messed up and I just didn't get enough feedback and it's just really not that good? So, but I had to send it out and get these blurbs and reviews. And the, the, what, what came back was just... Oh. Seriously, <laughs> that what people said about the book in the very beginning, I, oh. first of all, I couldn't believe some of the people that you had were just amazing, but they loved it. And okay, I want to say one more thing and then I promise we'll wrap up. But one of, um, who's the guy from Hay House? Reed, what's Reed his Tracy. name? Yes, Reed Tracy. Yes, I love what Reed Tracy said. He said, this is by far a phenomenal business book, but it's so much more than just a business book. And that's where I think your personal stories make it so much more. Right. Yeah. 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 It's was, good stuff. It was awesome. You know, Jeff, thank you so much for spending this time with us. This is like the mini lesson in launching and anybody listening that wants to really first take their product program service to the next level, but also just change their life in the process. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's very, very true. You've got to get your hands on this book. So I'll talk about it here in the outro as well. But Jeff, first, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. It's great being on with you. All right. You great have a great out. day. Thank you. you Take too. care. Bye-bye. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this launching online conversation as much as I have. As you can see, Jeff is the real deal. He not only truly knows how to make money online, but he actually really cares about the people he works with. And that's why I'm such a fan. So again, just go to amyporterfield.com forward slash launch to get your hands on that book and all those really cool bonuses that he talks about as well. Until the next time we chat, I hope you have a wonderful week and start thinking about how you're going to launch online soon. Keep me updated on all of your successes. I'd love to hear about what you all are working on and I can't wait to talk to you again soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com.